Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Stu Miniman. We're with Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of Dell Storage Forum. We're live in Boston with Praveen Astana, who is the Vice President of Enterprise Solutions and Strategy at Dell. Praveen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks very much for making time out of your busy schedule. The Dell Storage Forum is, uh, is rocking. Uh, yes. second, second year in a row for us in the converged Dell Storage Forum, but uh, I know there were some pockets uh, you know, previously, but uh, really starting to come together for you guys. You, you were mentioning off camera that you had been with Dell for eight years and the storage group for five years, so you've seen this transformation yes, occur firsthand. How, how, how does that feel? How, can, you just, can you just describe what it was like five, six years ago at, at Dell and sort of what it's like today in yeah. storage? Uh, I mean, it feels great, first of all, to, to see where storage has come at Dell. When I joined Dell, uh, we were primarily a reseller, so we basically sold other people's storage. Now we make our own storage, we have our own IP, and we're addressing customers' needs. I can tell you that uh, when I started at Dell, storage was the last on the agenda when we did the ops reviews with Michael Dell and Kevin Rollins. Today it's first on the agenda. Really? So it's really changed in terms of the importance that Dell is giving to storage. How did it change the nature of the conversations that you had with had or have with customers? Well, customers uh, really started taking us very seriously because storage is actually probably the most, uh, uh, you know, addresses the most important part of their infrastructure, which is their data. Uh, it's the lifeblood of many customers right now is data which they use to make better business decisions. So. We look at, um, you know, a joke we have is that we look at the storage business like the, the bank vault and the server like the ATM. One is more important than the other. <laughs> so, so Praveen, we're talking about convergence. If I look at from the services side, converged infrastructure has been put together by, by you know, the VARs, the integrators, and by the service teams for, for many years. So can, can you tell us you know, really what's the journey been for Dell from uh, kind of you know, putting all the pieces together from just the services part to uh, like what you have with the VSTART today where you've got all the pieces and you're, and you're integrating them? Yeah. So when we talked to customers, what they told us was, look, we're tired of having to integrate and assemble the stuff that vendors make. Why don't you guys do this and give it to us? And we thought about that and said, you know, actually we have the technology, if you will. Um, I hate that quote from the Six Million Dollar Man, that TV series, right? Yeah. But anyway, we can rebuild yeah. it stronger, yeah. faster, yeah. better. Yes. Well, we, we, we have the, we have the, the, the uh, capabilities from a supply chain perspective, a manufacturing perspective, as well as an optimization perspective to build what the customers want. What do customers want? The customers today, more and more, are buying VMs. Used to be they would buy servers and storage and networking. Today they're buying VMs, saying I want 100 VMs or 1,000 VMs. Well, to create that uh, VM and make it useful, you need to have not just the server, but also the storage, networking, and the management. And we, you know, we have years of experience with virtualization. We're the number one reseller, we've been the number one reseller of VMware for quite some time. Uh, and so we have you know, looked at our hundreds of thousands of customers who have bought um, you know, virtualization, or millions actually, who have bought virtualization from us, and figured out what it is it takes to optimize. So we know how to do the optimization. And so when we create a VSTART for 100 VMs or 500 VMs, we've optimized that infrastructure for the customer. Far better than they could do themselves. Saved them a lot of time, uh, a lot of money. Okay, and, and not just VMware, Microsoft, uh, I believe, is part of the, the, the VSTART package. Absolutely, um, yeah. And that's a, that's a very important point, which is that we offer choice to our customers. Uh, so it's both uh, Microsoft and VMware, uh, are both partners of us, and we offer uh, VSTARTs for, for both. So what are those discussions with Michael Dell and Kevin Rollins like? Um, you know, I mean, obviously you can't give us, uh, you know, the, the, the too much inside baseball, but you know, what are you guys talking about? Um, yeah, back then and, and now, I mean, Dell still, I mean, Dell's a $60 billion company with a $20 billion market cap, and that's a big part of the reason for the transformation is, look, we got to own more of our own IP. It can't happen fast enough for investors, obviously, but as I was saying at the top of the show, Dell has more cash on the balance sheet than any other storage company. Um, I guess with the exception of Oracle, but really Oracle's not a storage company, but let's throw them in the mix. So you, you can virtually compete with anybody uh, in the acquisition game. So the, the strategy is to increase your intellectual property ownership and increase margins and obviously cash flow and profits, right? Um, so 
Talk about that a little bit. You know, what's that high level strategy? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's uh, always best to start with the customer, honestly. Because if you, can, if, you can, if you can win with the customer, you can win in the end with your financials and all that stuff. And we noticed that, after, I'll go back to storage again as a great example, then I'll, I'll address that point directly. But when, when we entered the storage business with our own IP, uh, I actually came up with three words that I thought would uh, really describe what we were trying to do from a philosophy perspective. It was simple, capable, affordable. When you think about that, storage at that time, storage networks were the opposite of simple, capable, affordable. They were hard, they were expensive, and they were capable, but you had to really have a lot of skills to be able to, to utilize that. So we said simple, capable, affordable, and we looked around, we found a company that embodied that, and that was Ecologic. And we bought Ecologic, uh, and that product was extremely successful for us, because it hit that philosophy that uh, if you, if you change the game for customers, change the economics of storage, make it easy, um, you can win. And that's what propelled that growth. So now we extend that to the rest of the data center. Saying how can we make the rest of the data center simple, capable, and affordable also? Uh, and that has driven a lot of our acquisition strategy, is finding the right technologies that can actually help us create a solution that will not, uh, you know, we don't want to add another uh, a, a Me Too product. We want to address the fundamental need that the customer has. So if you talk about, for example, um, convergence and cloud, well, we know that customers, when they, w when they want to talk about converged infrastructure, they don't want to be locked in. They still want to have choice. And so we acquired a company called Scalent, which allows management in heterogeneous fashion. That's really been very, uh, you know, uh, resonated with customers. Uh, when we talk about cloud, what customers want to do is connect their off-premise cloud with what's on-premise. We bought a company called Boomi that allows for applications to be connected on-premise and off-premise. So I think our strategy in terms of um, what we are buying, what we will buy in the future, is not driven so much by a, um, a margin profile or a financial metric like that. It's how do we win in the marketplace and with basic philosophies like simple, capable, affordable. So um, if you were getting simple, capable, and affordable from your previous relationships, let's say whether they be OEM or, or reseller, are you suggesting that you might not have gone down this path? Um, if we were, the answer would be yes. Uh, we probably, w there, w there would be no reason to do that if that was the only thing that we wanted to do. But if you look at the way um, technology is evolving, more and more, if you do not own the various parts, you're not able to engineer the best solution for the customer. So as an example, networking. Why did we go into networking? We had great relationships with Brocade and Juniper. Uh, and they have a good, good coverage. However, we found that unless we owned a networking operating system, we are not able to create a converged infrastructure or even to create the best offering for virtualization because you, one part of one of the legs of that three-legged stool, you cannot change at all. Right, so academically the answer to my question would have been yes, but practically speaking, you're saying you would not have been able to accomplish simple, af capable, and affordable without basically owning your own destiny and being able to do that integration. That's right. Okay, and so uh, we've been commenting that Dell I think uniquely, when it comes to acquisitions, focuses more on integration, um, or maybe it just maybe it just f succeeds more. I don't know. But um, can you talk about that that focus on integration? Because um, it seems like it's unique in the industry. A lot of companies buy companies, and they'll just sort of leave them alone, and they'll do very well. Um, and integration is sort of an afterthought. Maybe it's a GUI. Um, why is Dell so focused on that? Well, I think uh, it starts with, um, you know, if we go back to what I said, it's purpose, purposeful acquisition. It was an acquisition just to get, uh, you know, address a new market segment or to change your financial profile. It was an acquisition to say, how can we create a better solution overall? And so, clearly, integration was part of the roadmap of making that happen. But, you know, this is a, this is a balancing act because you cannot um, buy a company and just say, hey, okay, we're going to absorb you in a few months. Uh, you cannot also just leave them to be an independent. You have to balance how you bring it in, and we have actually a pretty disciplined and balanced approach of doing that. Uh, one of the best I've seen in the industry. Um, and, and I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I've been in the in this industry for a long time, and I've seen many companies 
you know, large companies buy other companies that just disappear. You have no idea what the, what happened to that. Uh, Dell has a couple of things going for it. First, we don't do many acquisitions. We do a few. We do ones that are absorbable. Do quite a few acquisitions, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've done a f uh, we've done quite a few lately, but yeah. but in general, I think that you know if you count the number of acquisitions we've done, it hasn't been as many as other yeah, companies. Yeah, sure. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Praveen, when we look at kind of the deployment, uh, services is something that tends to not be talked about as much. If you know, if it's simple and it's automated, you know, magically it's just going to go in there. But we know that there's a lot of services, um, c and we're here at Dell talking about uh, the the channel a lot. So, can you talk to, you know, what is the balance and in, in the, the the touch points and the handshakes between Dell's services and the, the channel partners when it comes to deploying converged infrastructure? Sure. Well. You know, specifically about converged infrastructure, or, or in just about any infrastructure, there is um, a lot of things that have to be done to get that infrastructure optimized and useful for the customer. Right. And what I mean by that is, it's not simply a matter of plugging it in and turning the button on and saying, okay, you're ready to go. It's a question of, okay, how do we now tune it for your application? How do we um, uh, build on what you have to make your whole infrastructure easier? And so, what we find is that you can, you can characterize the number of the tasks that have to happen as very mundane tasks like cabling and you know, just hooking stuff up and making sure uh, you, know, you allocate LUNs and things like that to much more sophisticated tasks where you're actually putting a lot of value add. So what we are trying to do for our, uh, our channel partners is hey, maybe we'll integrate the mundane tasks in the infrastructure so you can focus on more of the value added tasks for your for the customer. Yeah, no, no, that's a great point because it's not just, even if customers are saying they want to deploy VMs, you know, VMs are not created equal. Well, from a workload standpoint, things change, that's customer right. environments. Are you doing anything to kind of harvest that field expertise that you get and the, the, all, the, all the deployments that you've done to, to kind of help iterate and learn? Yeah, we are. We're, we're very much look, trying to learn from our customer deployments and, and then um, you know, take that knowledge base to create reference architectures, known good states, that we can um, you know, have a customer start with. Uh, what we have found in many cases is that the customer does not want a fixed configuration. They want to have some flexibility, but they want to start with a reference point or a known good state. Yeah, so do you have any data points for us? Uh, you know, NetApp just put out a press release saying they've got a thousand customers and then they've got over 20 kind of templated, really well understood uh, you know, applications that they can use and obviously NetApp's pitching that this is a flexible environment. So you know, they've got 20 applications. EMC, when they launched their vSpecs, kind of had five initial use cases. You know, how, how many different uh, environments is, is Dell pushing convergence um, into? I don't know the answer to actually that question, but I think we can, uh, you know, we're building up our database on that, but I think that the, the key thing here is that we look at major applications like VDI, or um, workloads, or big, small, medium, large uh, configurations. You know, so there's, there's, like an, there's an infinite number of configurations that you can have. Yeah. I think the key point is for us is just to, um, you know, for the mid-market is to start with something that is optimized for them. Right, yeah, it's, it's always that balance between you want to have it as homogeneous as possible because that simplifies and I can do automation around it, and, but I still want to have flexibility. So h how do you, you know, do you say yes to every customer environment or h how do you keep that balance so that you understand what a customer has? Because, you know, t to be honest, I think about from a services standpoint, so much time is wasted to try to figure out, okay, what does this customer really have? And convergence is supposed to simplify that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that in many ways, um, all of us in the industry are early in the convergence game. And so we're, we're figuring out exactly what the boundaries are between what's acceptable as a fixed configuration and what is a you know, completely variable configuration. We're, we're just sorting out the boundaries. Uh, when we first came out with vStarts, for example, um, a lot of customers said, you know, I really like that idea. I really like it at all, but can I just have this tweak to it? I just want these CNAs and not those CNAs. I want this different, and, and you know, and we would accommodate that because we have the right kind of manufacturing infrastructure that can enable that to happen. But um, now some customers are saying, you know, I don't really want to mess with that. If it's going to give me 100 VMs, I'll just take that. So, it's, so part of it is an education on the customer that, that a fixed config is okay. And so I think that, um, 
Um, we're in this journey. I wouldn't say that uh, uh, we fully understand um, what the parameters are Praveen. in the whole industry. Oh, so, so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so Praveen, <coughs> I wanted to ask you, um, I saw an interesting note next to your name in the schedule, and it was HTML5. Um, and I said, hmm, interesting. You know, usually storage guys don't talk about that. Was that a, a typo on our guys, or do you have something to say about HTML5? I mean, we got the Apple Worldwide Developer Conferences going on this week, and are you guys doing stuff in, in uh, next generation languages and interfaces? Uh, or? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, so, uh, I'm not an expert in HTML5, I was pretty that, so I'm not sure why that, why that was there next to my name. <laughs> but I can tell you that obviously we have a very um, you know, um, strong uh, client business and we're doing a number of things to, to make that end user productivity better. So HTML5 is one of the languages that sure. clearly you know, can help with some of this whole idea of uh, device independence uh, and you know, being able to deliver applications in different ways. So there's a number of things we're doing there. In general, for if you think if you lock if you think about end user computing and end user uh, virtualization, we're doing a lot. Recently, we bought a company called Wise, which is puts us now as number one yeah. in uh, really end user virtual computing. Tarkin Mainer here. <laughs> he, I, he might be here. Yeah, he's been on the cube a number of times. Yeah, he's a he's, a, he's a quite a character. He is. So. Uh, we, you know, we understand quite well that the endpoint can be can be nice and sexy, but the real action is in the back end. Real action is with the server, storage, networking, management, security, and services. And so that's the sort of uh, infrastructure we're putting in. So that even if you were, even if you were misguided enough to buy an Apple tablet, we would be the back end for it. <laughs> Yeah. It's a gift. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, and then the other, it was this, so this was HTML5 it was a list of topics that, you know, that was sort of things that, you know, we might want to think about. The other was IT strategic value. Now that's something that five or eight years ago, if mm -hmm. I were CIO, I probably wouldn't be having a discussion with Dell about my strategic value. Are you having those discussions today? About Dell strategic value or oh. IT strategic value? Well, IT strategic okay. value. Yeah, we are, Dell fits. we're absolutely yeah. having that discussion today. So the, the CIO has, uh, you know, is transforming in the, uh, themselves from being, let's say, the, the, the chief infrastructure officer, which is what they've been for many years, to actually being the chief innovation or chief information officer. They, they want to, the CIO really wants to be part of the, 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 the group of executives in the company that's helping drive the business forward not just the manager, like the facilities manager. They really want to change, and that's all over the world. I was in Japan last year in December in Korea, and I was getting the same feedback for a lot of CIOs, which is, hey, we don't want to just be handling plumbing. We want to help increase revenues. How can you help us do that? And, uh, you know, we understand that there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is, one is that you actually, um, reduce the amount of time and effort that the IT departments are spending on maintenance. Because it, it's, they spend 75% of the time on keeping the lights on. And so that leaves very little time to develop new applications that can help drive the business forward. So by making uh, infrastructure more efficient, easy to manage, you can shift the balance of effort towards 